what is the largest post request that we can make to the HTTP web server before we get a 400 error or the server just crashes? How about we find out, guys? All right, guys. So in this video, I want to, uh, I have a Node.js backend server and uh, I want to send a post request and I'm gonna uh, add some body to the post request. And slowly with each request, I'm gonna increase the body size, basically a JSON document, until the server cannot, can no longer handle that post request. So, and uh, during this process, I have Wireshark here, so we can look how many TCP segment uh, this post request will be broken into. And we're gonna have fun doing this anatomy. How about we jump into it, guys? So here's my Raspberry Pi, and it's running Node.js, and it has like a little bit of an express server, okay? Obviously, this experiment, guys, would differ based on the memory uh, server type, web server type, whether I have proxies or not, but I'm taking it to the bare bone here, where I have just a pure Node.js server uh, on my Raspberry Pi, and uh, here's my client. And my client will be, guess what? Just a browser. So what we're gonna do here is gonna go to uh, Raspberry Pi One Eighty Eighty, and there is nothing but the reason I'm going here to avoid course uh, cross origin resource sharing. And this is like a just give me the test. There's nothing really here. Just a good request. The reason I did that is so now we establish a TCP connection right between the our client and the server. So there's a three-way handshake, all that stuff. We sent a get request, we got back the results. Nothing fancy here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove all that stuff. We we know how this works. We have done countless uh, Wireshark Git in this channel. All right, so what I'm gonna do here next is, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna declare a variable called products and I'm gonna initialize it. And uh, let's start with an empty array, how about that? And then I'm gonna send a fetch command, HTTP, Raspberry Pi 1, 8080, and here's what we're gonna do. Since we're gonna send a, a, post, a post request, we have to specify that in the get request, in the, in the fetch command, right? So the method is post, and uh, since we're sending JSON, we have to tell the server, hey, server, watch up, right? I am sending JSON, so we're gonna send the content type, application slash JSON. And then finally, the body. And the body will be the JSON, JSON.stringify products. That's it. And then we do all this jazz. Dot then a dot JSON, because we're expecting JSON from the server. And then all, all of a sudden, just, just print whatever we get. And how about we make the first good, <laughs> because we misspelled application to JSON. Now I spelled it right. The reason is because we didn't spell it right, the server had no idea what I was sending it, so it didn't know it's JSON, so it freaked out. So now, that's more like it. Now it's zero products. <laughs> okay, let's try it all over again. Zero product is one post request. All right, there you go, this sin act. Here's a weird thing that uh, the browser's done. It closes the connection and it's, trying to reuse existing connections so it's a little bit different right so it closes old connections and establishing brand new ones sen ac and sen ac but look at that host right and sending the array which is empty there is nothing there and the server receives zero products from the client okay that's the result let's spice things up a little bit so we're gonna do a for loop for let i equals zero i less than 100 i plus plus and then just do product dot push i just gonna push the results to i and now we'll resend the same post request boom now we have 100 so it's a little bit larger post request right still it f it got fit into one tcp packet so let's spice things a little bit so that's not really much fun, but let's do it. Boom. Let's do a thousand and resend that command. Now we'll have a thousand. All right, we have the thousand elements JSON transported to a four TCP packets. 
really not much so we know that if you have like a thousand how big is this that's a good question right so how many uh what how big is that thing right so we can we can find out by doing this right uh json dot stringify right and then we do products dot length so it's around 4k 4 kilobytes all right spice things a little bit more clear this up and then we do a 10,000 10,000 is 53 kilobytes which we send it okay all right all right that's the post request all right look at all these acts it's a little bit spicy now Thir 38 reassemble tcp segment still the server's handling it no problem okay 38 kilobytes not big so let's go a little bit higher than that a hundred thousand right a hundred thousand is around that's a lot half a meg that's not really big right so we can we can maybe increase that a little bit more but yeah half a meg half a meg oh look at that that didn't take much a half a meg and we got a 403 payload too large and who i wonder who sent us this we're gonna find out very soon now so it's actually the server responding back telling us like hey i cannot handle the, this big of a payload so the server realized it it got it started parsing the results and found out that hey that's way big of a post request for me to handle so i'm gonna re respond back with an error 401 payload too large that's why you have to break down post requests especially when you're uploading files you cannot just upload it one just like that right so half a mega is our deal here so let's see look at that so we technically and this is very important guys you took the hit right let's do it again let's clear this garbage and do it all over again i'm just gonna send it again and look at that i'm gonna see how what is the post request i'm gonna find it <laughs> look at that guys this is very interesting i can't wireshark could not assemble the post request because and this is very important because this is a streaming model right what happened here is first we send the headers right and then we turn it on and start sending all the packets one by one see that all these packets are getting sent from the client look at that each one of them is what around one uh one kilobyte right we send one kilobyte a tcp packet so that's the apparently the mtu the maximum transmitter transmit unit look at that and we were we're taking the hit to send all of that stuff the question is once the the server starts streaming and and reading all these uh post requests until it says you know what you've been sending me data uh, that's a long request and i still didn't know where is the end of this request and i know where is the beginning of the request. so i'm gonna say that request is just too long look at this stuff so at the at this after sending like this length it's like okay you know what Ser uh, server i'm gonna respond back it says hey you know what it's just too large <laughs> it actually responded back it was like hey, you know what four of uh, four oh, four one three payload too large whatever you're sending me man you guys stop doing it right now and just don't don't ever try at all all right look at that and then this is the some to keep alive to keep the tcp connections alive the http one one that is a very interesting use case all right so half a meg and and the server in this case just actually crashed look at that oh, poor thing look at that payload too large error request entity too large can you configure this to be larger absolutely you can is it a good idea probably not because look at this guys 
you are taking the head. Yeah, you're getting an error and you're taking the head. You're, you're saturating the network with all these TCP packets because those that half a meg has to be broken down into what? It's like into one and a half kilobyte right, worth of TCP packets that will be transmitted and the server will start reading and reading and reading and reading. That's another way you can DDoS the server, by the way. You can just, uh, you guys to just like start, uh, that's how slow Lotus works, right? You can start slowly just sending packets to the server until it just gives up. It says, you know what? You're, uh, yeah, if you're send if you start sending a slow TCP packet to the server, the server was just accepting them, man. Until before you, you hit that timeout, the body timeout, I believe, for if that body timeout exists in the server then you can actually bring the server down because the server will be will keep busy just serving you that's why building web servers are pretty hard right you have to account for these timeouts you gotta have to attack for the account for these attacks and all that stuff right all right guys though so that was a quick video showing you what is the largest post request that we can send to express before it crashes and the answer looks like it's around half a meg that's it. You divide by a thousand, yeah, six hundred kilobyte, and that that baby is done. Maybe it's less than that, to be honest, right? But yeah, that's what we can find out. All right, guys, that's it for me today. See you in the next one. What should I make next? Tell me in the comment section below. Goodbye.